triple X. It must be great to go on a mission to danger, death, destruction, mayhem. You never know when some evil freak villain's gonna hop out, not to mention the women. How long have you been a secret agent? Two days. And they probably picked you up pumping iron in San Quentin. <laughs> You ever get punched in the face for talking too much? From the director and producer of The Fast and the Furious. Dirty, dangerous, uncivilized. I love his attitude. Comes a new breed of secret agents. I want all of that in here. Cool. Never fall with the thoughts I take me. How far can I go? Can I go? Vin Diesel is Triple X. Shaken and stirred. Okay, so ask yourself these questions Do you like Fast and the Furious? Do you like Vin Diesel? And do you like any of the James Bond movies? If you answered yes to at least two of these questions, you will enjoy Triple X. Because Triple X is basically a movie where Dominic from Fast and the Furious became a secret agent. I mean, it's a fluff movie with no real meat to it, but it's pretty fun. The explosions and over-the-top everything makes it an enjoyable, if not very plausible, ride. Throw this on if you just want a nice mindless action film, and you won't be disappointed. Telling the story of my father's life, it's impossible to separate fact from the fiction, the man from the myth. The best I can do is to tell it the way he told me. If there was one thing you can say about it, boom, boom. Was that I was intended for larger things. I was the biggest thing Ashton had ever seen. From the imagination of director Tim Burton. Most men, they'll tell you stories straight through. It won't be complicated, but it won't be interesting either. Did you ever think that maybe you're not too big? But maybe this town is just too small? They say when you meet the love of your life, time stops. And that's true. Your mother was never supposed to marry me. She was engaged to somebody else. Forget it, kid. Don't waste your time. She's out of your league. You don't even know me. Sure I do. You were hot stuff back in Hitville. Edward Blue! But here in the real world, you got squat. Now, I may not have much, but I have more determination than any man you're ever likely to meet. Sandra Templeton, I love you, and I will marry you! I was drying out. <laughs> Dad, I have no idea who you are. What do you want, Well, Who do you want me to be? Just yourself. Just show me who you are for once. Big Fish. Big Fish is a surprisingly touching father and son story. I feel like everyone knows someone who tells Big Fish stories. An uncle, father, grandpa, whatever. This movie explores a father and son's relationship and really puts an insightful spin on Big Fish stories. It's been a long time since a movie choked me up a little bit, but this one's pretty good for that. The colors and atmosphere of this film vary so much it creates a nice tapestry of different feelings. It really seems like you're seeing this man's life drawn out in front of his son, and that's really nice to see. I highly recommend this one. It's a nice balance of comedy and drama with neither overpowering the other. Choose life. Choose a job. Choose a career. Choose a family. Choose a big television. You're a quiet, sensitive type. A little bit crazy, a little bit bad. 
such as washing machines, cars, compact displays, and dental insurance. You lied on your application. Only to get my foot in the door. What exactly attracts you to the leisure industry? In a word, pleasure. Like, more pleasure than other people's leisure. He's always been lacking in moral fiber. He knows a lot about Sean Connery. That's hardly a substitute. Do you see the beast? Have you got it in your sights? Clear enough, Mitch Money Penny. She was sitting on that couch watching mind numbing, spirit crushing game shows, stuffing junk food into your mouth. Ben is psycho, man. He's a mate. What? So, what can you do? What are you two talking about? Football! What are you talking about? Shopping! What's on the menu this evening, sir? The dodgiest scam in a lifetime of dodgy scams. <laughs> Choose leisure wear and matching luggage. Choose good health and a career. Choose your friends. Choose your future. Choose life. Train Spotting is an iconic film. I find Train Spotting to be a very interesting visual film. The combination of the narration and the catchy abstract images keeps you constantly entertained. You're never too sure what's going to happen next in this film, because honestly they blur the lines of reality so much you're never quite sure if what he's seeing is fantasy or if it's actually happening. It's a hell of a trippy ride that has gone down in history as a staple in drug culture and in movie culture. If you haven't seen this one and consider yourself a movie buff, then you have some homework to do. John. It's going to take you a while to adjust to civilian life. And writing a blog about everything that happens to you will honestly help you. Nothing happens to me. How fresh? Just in. 67 natural causes. Used to work here. I knew him. He was nice. Fine. We'll start with the writing crop. You want me for a flatmate. You're the second person to say that to me today. Who's the first? The name's Sherlock Holmes and the address is 221B Baker Street. Who are you? What do you do? I'm a consulting detective. What does that mean? It means when the police are out of their depth, they consult me. I'm breaking every rule letting you in here. Yes, because you need me. God help me. The game, Mrs. Hudson, is on. Look at him dashing about. My husband was just the same. But you're more the sitting down type, I can tell. What is it like in your funny little brains? It must be so boring. You're not haunted by the war, Dr. Watson. You'll miss it. Sherlock Holmes is a great man. And I think one day, he might even be a good one. That's how you get your kicks, isn't it? Risking your life to prove you're clever. Sherlock! Sherlock, season one. Why didn't I think of that? Because you're an idiot. No, 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 don't be like that. Practically everyone is. The idea of a BBC episodic version of Sherlock sounded really hokey to me, so I never really bothered to sit down for it. It got to the point that I actually avoided Sherlock for years after it came out, always reassuring myself that it had to be a silly half cock show. It just had to be. But boy was I wrong. After much coercing, a friend of mine got me to sit down for the first episode. By the same day's end, I was caught up. Which isn't actually as hard as you'd think, as there's only about a dozen episodes out right now. But each of those episodes is about an hour and a half long, and they feel like their own self-contained movie. And they're all amazing. Sherlock has proven to be one of my favorite thrillers, period. To have something be so well done and so coherent is pretty much unheard of in television. If you haven't seen this, do yourself a favor and just sit through the first episode. Trust me, you won't regret it. Alright, so that was the Netflix recommendations for the week. Uh, another TV show in there, going with Sherlock oh. this time. Uh, he's the reason why I watched the series, but it was uh, over a year ago that I did. God damn, they... 
I, I'm a guy that looks out for representation of genre, of time period, and it's just such a revamp, such a modern, yet they still have the horror episode where the, you know, unfilmed thing is in the woods. They, oh, the, they have such a great episode just on love for Valentine's <laughs> with such a hokey ending, but it, it, it catches you off guard in such a way that makes you question if it's his fantasy or if he's actually on top of it, who he thinks he is. This is really, really good, and it's honestly like multiple f movies. They are fe this is a feature length TV show. Yeah, uh, it's it is like it's a feature length TV show, and it's a well made one. It is one of the best things on Netflix in terms of TV. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the best TV shows I've seen. There's a long wait until you're gonna get another season, but it's worth it. It's really worth it, and that's the thing. That's why people people are upset, but people are waiting. Yeah, it's, it's that good. Um, less notable on here, though, is Triple X. Triple X is a fun action movie. It's Vin Diesel goofing around, jumping on motorbikes and snowmobiles. I saw it when I was, like, 14, and yeah, it really couldn't be as cool as Vin Diesel. Like, yeah. not that he was an A-list star, no, it's just, damn, the things he'll do for his country, you know? And <laughs> that was imprinted on me as a young boy, and it's still deep inside me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's a goofy one, but you can have a lot of fun with it. Like, yeah. everybody does a good job of it. Uh, like, everyone pulls off their roles. It's goofy Russian mobsters, but no one no one cracks a smile, you know? Everybody keeps it going. The action sequences are really well done. There's all the James Bond stuff in there, and it's... it's and good. even on the writing aspect, to toot its horn a little bit, when they do the diner setup, you know, and it relies on... Vin Diesel giving sort of uh, exposition on his past, but in a way that is relevant to the situation at hand. It is still exposition, but you wouldn't notice it as such. You get to know about, like, his mom. Yeah. You know, it's just his upbringing, and you cover a lot of ground in just that one scene. Yeah, it's really good about keeping it going and not doing too much exposition. Like, it's, it's not a great film because you're working with, like, a basic action movie, you know? It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a convict who's an action hero, and that... They take it pretty far, and it's fun, but it's not much more than that. Here, here for having Rammstein in your soundtrack. Hmm. What is this, early 2000s? Yeah, about there. Yeah, they're um, still popular. They're still a big, huge German band. Yeah, Du Hast. Yeah. That was, that was really big for them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh. Train spotting, though. Cutting to something that really gets the upper crust. Danny Boyle's breakout hit. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Before he did things like 28 Days Later and that, oh, James Franco trapped under a rock movie. Oh, uh, 127 <laughs> hours. Oh. Yeah, that, uh, Train Spotting is one of the better drug movies I've seen. Yep. It's definitely had ripples. Who hasn't seen a baby walking on the ceiling if you're in, in taking adult entertainment? It gets referenced. It, mm -hmm. This is a real notable one. Oh. It's a weird one, too, because I've seen it called a comedy. And yep. I, like, no. It doesn't feel like a comedy. <laughs> it feels like a drama, but at the same time, it's not overwhelming like something like Requiem for a Dream would be. No, and it... Not to call it a sort of British gangster movie, if you've seen things like Snatch, you've seen it, but it's really punching with its editing. Punchy with its editing. It's just... It, it, it's a different carrying of tone. But mm -hmm. I really gotta remark that whoever the director of photography was, whoever the cinematographer was, it really is captured well. Mm. Oh. Last guy on this list here for us to just briefly mention is Big Fish. Um, I have no opinions. I just see the colorful poster. I I've heard about Big Fish for years and years, and I only watched it uh, relatively recently. And it's been a long time since I watched a movie that actually kind of emotionally moved me. Like uh, it's all about the relationship of a father and son, and this father telling Big Fish stories. And it's I was just impressed that it carried that much emotional weight throughout it's it's goofy in places it's sad in places it's it's surprising i would, would you say it has a air of escapism uh a bit but it's also the, the main character is a realist mm. he's a very practical guy and he hates that his father tells these stories and that really gets to him throughout so i, I don't know if i'd say it's escapism exactly but mm. uh it's a family tale. I think it's just about like a son and father and their strained rela relationship. And well, it's really nice. It's a really nice comedy drama. 
Um, it's kind of sad, though. Fair enough. Now, before we go, I'd just like to say to all you boys who are imprinted with triple X at a young age, comment below. Here, here. <laughs> Anything? Uh, just, what do you guys think of train spotting compared to other sorts of drug films like Requiem for a Dream or Blow or, uh, you know, Pineapple Express even? How it stands mm. out and how it sets itself apart from those other movies? Because I, I find it really interesting. Yep. Well, like, comment, subscribe below. See ya. See ya.